Welcome to Purpose of Life Ministries, where we want you to find your purpose, live your purpose, and share your purpose. Please join the service in progress as Pastor David W. Green Sr. shares a word from his series, Calm. If you're in the Indianapolis area, we would love for you to visit one of our three services on Sunday at 8 a.m., 10 a.m., or noon. We're located at 3705 Kessler Boulevard, North Drive in Indianapolis. this morning to the gospel according to St. John, the gospel according to St. John, chapter number 11. I want to read just two verses in your hearing, verses 21 and 22. That passage from chapter 11, verse 1 through 44, it constitutes the context from which we will attempt to preach, but due to the limitations on our time and due to, hopefully, you're familiar with with the text that I just want to lift up verses 21 and 22. And those of you that have read the text, stay with me. Don't turn me off. God has a word for us on the day found in the gospel according to St. John chapter 11. I want to read verses 21 and 22. I do solicit your prayers and your amens on this day. And it's there that we find these words recorded. Lord, Martha said to Jesus, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But I know that even now, God will give you whatever you ask. And for a few moments this morning, I would like to use for subject or theme, hurting sisters dealing with sick brothers sisters dealing with sick brothers. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Hurting sisters dealing with sick brothers. I want to continue our series that we've entitled Church Scandal. We've entitled it Church Scandal. And we started on my Sunday looking at a church spoke because I wanted to begin there because part of the reason that there is so much scandal inside the church, the called out ones, is because there's, we have this expectation level. And when the expectation level is not met, scandal usually falls out. And because we're often thinking about people in a certain perspective, we're expecting certain things, and when that doesn't happen, man, things can be off the chart. And today, uh, today I want to look at hurting women, ladies, sisters that have to deal with sick brothers. Now, don't, don't misunderstand, I am equal of opportunity and I clearly understand that there are some hurting brothers having to deal with some sick sisters. But because I can't get it all in one sermon, I'm gonna have to divide it up, all right? Amen, just for the record. Now, I don't want you to think this is one-sided. Uh, time will not permit me, y'all won't stay long enough. Your attention span is not long enough for me to cover both in one sermon. So today I want to focus on the fact that there are some hurting sisters that are dealing with some sick brothers. And that creates, that creates, just think about that, that if you come to church and then uh, in church you think that everybody's healed, if you're thinking they're whole, you're thinking because of their title or who, who they portray themselves to be, there shouldn't be any issues. But the real deal is, sister, you may be sitting on the road with a sick brother. And sick brother, you may be sitting on the road with a hurting sister. 
So don't, don't trip out because somebody didn't speak to you when you walked in. You don't know where they've been at. Hello, somebody. Amen. Don't assume they got it all together. They just, you know, they, I mean, they just super saved. I mean, you know, no, no. They could have issues. And the real deal is there's a lot of people that they're hurting sisters and they're dealing with some sick brothers. Now, this is so heavy. I want to come to your house today and I just want to sit down at your living room area, dining room, if you want to cook, that's all right. I can sit in the kitchen while you cook. And we're going to dialogue a little bit about this hurting sisters that are dealing with sick brothers. We're going to talk a little bit about that because it's so real, it's so prevalent. Y'all don't mind, do you? Those of you who are visiting with me, uh, we, uh, we're a little different sometimes. I just want come to your house and let's have a discussion to pretend like it's just me and you today. Now, the real deal is that most of us have some people in our life that we want more for them than they want for themselves. And they can leave you hurt and leave you wounded. Because you love them, but you can't lift them. Anybody know what I'm talking about? You got somebody in your mind and it came on the YouTube of your imagination. Yeah, you, you, you love them, but you can't lift them. You care about them. You wish you could correct some of their choices and some of the decisions that they're making. But you want it more for them than they want it for themselves. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Amen. I'm talking about the person that jumped in the forefront of your mind. You already see that they're on a road to destruction. That man, they are man. They they, they stuck on stupid. They park in his ride. You can see that they're making choices and decisions that's going to destroy them and not help them. But even in loving them, you still can't lift them because you want it more than they want. I'm just talking about what I'm talking about. I mean, I'm talking about somebody who's on fool's freeway and refuses to take the exit. Hello, somebody. Anybody here know somebody that's on fool's freeway and just refused to take the exit? This week they could have got off the exit and still kept on traveling. Fool's freeway. Amen. Amen. Man. You got them in your mind. You might as well text them right now and say, Pastor's talking about you. Amen. Just text them right now. Pastor's talking about you today. I'll explain it to you later. You just on, you on a highway you won't even get off of. And you've been trying to help them get off of this path. And say, now, I love you. And I'm trying to get you to shift. And you won't change. You keep on making choices and decisions that will destroy your life rather than help you. Because the real deal is you can get caught up with people that, that you love, that, that you, you're seeking the best interest out for, but you want it more than them. There's a woman, let me give it to you this way. There's a woman by the name of Pam Greer. Pam Greer, D. Bridgeshaw, me and you know her. She, she, she was an actress. She was an actress. She played in a movies, uh, Coffee. Uh, Foxy Brown. Hey, somebody know what I'm talking about. Yeah, man. The Big Bird Cage is what it was. Something like that. And she used to go with a fella, because y'all so say, by the name of Richard Pryor. Only a part of y'all know him. Y'all so say. Remember, I'm at your house. You can pull your church face down. And I ain't checked your DVR. I see what you're watching. Remember, we at your house. Don't act like you don't know him. And so she was, she was in love with Richard Pryor. But Richard Pryor, and she wanted for Richard Pryor, this talented, genius, communicator, more for him than he wanted for himself. Richard had an addiction to, to, to cocaine. And, and, and while Pam wanted to be with Richard and wanted him to be successful and was pushing him for the right direction, she wanted it more than Richard wanted it. And Richard had decided in his mind that he loved the addiction. He had to have the cocaine. 
And he did that because he, he, he made pain-based decisions. Did y'all hear me? He made pain-based decisions. And when you're in pain and you're making decisions, you often want to get something that will make you feel better. And so his solution was to take cocaine so he could feel better because he's got some pain in his life. Are y'all following me? Because I don't want us to get to looking down on Richard because some of us have made some pain-based decisions. Hello, somebody. That, that's why we end up sick. That's why we end up hurt, because we made some pain-based decisions. Amen. We may not have the same choice that he had, but we made some pain-based decisions and picked some stuff trying to eradicate the pain that we had. Now, now for Richard, his came from his past. Amen, amen. It came from his past. See, when you don't resolve your past, yeah, yeah, it will impact where you're going with your future. Yeah, you, if you're not careful, you'll become a prisoner of your present because you did not resolve your past. And a lot of people that come to church, their issue, their pain, their hurt, their sickness comes from the fact that they have not resolved their past. Hello, somebody. It keeps them away from focusing on their future because they became a prisoner of their present. And so Richard missed out on a relationship that he could have had for a lifetime because he made pain-based decisions and said, I'd rather have the cocaine than the right relationship with pain. Y'all still looking at me strange. Let, let me give you another Motown legend. His name is uh, Marvin, uh, Marvin, uh, yay, all right, got some folk in here gonna be real, amen. Just check in with y'all, amen, Marvin Gaye. All uh, the spiritual folk were thinking Marvin Sapp. No, I was talking about Marvin Gaye. Amen. It's your holy self. I was thinking about Marvin Gaye. I told you Motown, right? Amen. Mar 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 Marvin, Marvin uh, had a lot of skills. He had a lot of skills. He had a lot of skills. But he also made some pain-based decisions. Amen. Mar Marvin, if you study him, he was... Uh, him and his father had a great relationship, but that relationship impacted, impacted him in a negative way because Marvin's father was a preacher, was a preacher and a cross-dresser. Somebody say church stand up. Yeah, yeah. He, he, Ma, Ma Marvin's father, who he looks up to, is a preacher. He's connected to the God of the universe, but he's also a cross-dresser. So it makes for an issue when you're six, seven, and eight, and you're looking at this man who's supposed to be a man of God, a man of the cloth, but he's also a cross-dresser. Mm. Amen. It makes for some scandal. It makes for some difficulties when, 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 when you have to make some painful decisions, when your daddy is the preacher proclaiming Jesus Christ. But he's also a cross-dresser. Yeah, yeah. Michael Eric Dyson in his book on Marvin Gaye tells how Marvin was molested at a very young age by one of his male relatives. Yeah, by one of his male relatives. And it impacted Marvin in a way that he's always trying to now prove as he got older that, you know, he's a man, and you know, that he, he really is a man, so he's trying to satisfy his sexual appetite by being with every woman possible. Hello, somebody. He's trying to prove himself. He's trying to, yeah, to say, I'm really a man that because of what he's gone through in the past and because of what his father did. He's impacted by that. So in his mind, he's trying to convince himself by satisfying his sexual appetite, by being with any and every woman possible, getting his swerve on. Are y'all following me in here? Amen. That's where Marvin is. 
He, you know, so when he wrote songs like Sexual Healing, y'all don't know nothing about it, Kelly. Just me and you know something about that. Amen. And this side over here still thinking about Marvin Sapp. I ain't talking about never would have made it. That ain't what I'm talking about. I said sexual healing. Keep it real, Pastor. Josh, you know anything about sexual healing? You use bishop. He's saying. Musicians don't know anything about sexual healing. Got eight kids, they don't know nothing. Just kidding. Just kidding. Just I'm just joking. I'm just joking. I've been starting some scandal in this room. <laughs> you all right, mama? I'm trying to, I'm keeping it clean. My mom and daddy right up front, just for now. Keeping it clean. They weren't here today, Lord Jesus. <laughs> because they here, but dad, no, you know something about sexual healing, man. You remember that, dad? Don't, don't act like you forgot mom again. <laughs> you remember personally. I don't want him to forget now. Shoot, I first think I got the record from him, shoot. <laughs> oh, Pastor, we hate to see you here. I, I, I. <laughs> and so Marvin is trying to satisfy his sexuality. I gotta pause it, brothers, because that's what, when we have a sickness like that, a lot of women end up hurt. Amen. And you see, we, we, you know, we pass being a dog. Yeah. Well, that's your mindset, you pass being a dog. Because dogs, they'll sniff on each other. They said, now before you get some of this, I need to know who you been with. <laughs> when you just jump in the bed with just any and everybody, hello somebody. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor. Why is he mad now? When you just jump in the middle of everybody, man, you pass being the dog. Watch dog. Dogs sniff each other. I'm on this. I'm keeping my mama and daddy right here. I'm keeping it clean. I'm keeping it clean. And we got Brother, we gotta recognize at least people wounded and hurt. You've got to resolve your past. Hello, somebody. Because it's impacting your future. You done, you done got stuck in your present. You on fool's freeway. And won't take an action to make a change, to make a shift and say, no, I can't keep doing this. This is crazy. And I want to suggest to us today that we're living in a day and age that we've got a lot of hurting sisters having to deal with sick brothers. When we look at our text today, I'm looking at it through an African-American community lens, if you don't mind. Because I am black. Y'all didn't know that, did you? Somebody gonna figure that out on the way home. In our text, there's some sisters, Mary and Mark, who are hurting. Their brother is sick. And I want to suggest that it's a picture of part of the challenge we have within the African American community that we've got a lot of hurt sisters dealing with sick brothers. Come back to get the flip side. Today is this side. Uh, and check this out. They're church going women. They did the right thing. They went to Jesus. Because when you come into chapter 11, first five verses, it's talking about them going to Jesus. They sent word to Jesus. They get the word to Jesus. Jesus, our brother Lazarus is sick, man. They did what the old saints told you to do. You're supposed to tell Jesus. And so they went and told Jesus. Jesus on the main line, tell him what you want. They told him. They church going with it. They love Jesus. They know Jesus. They're going to bring their situation to Jesus. They're taking their hurt to Jesus. What hurt them even more is verse 6 of chapter 11. 
Because in verse 6 of chapter 11, the Bible says, so when he heard, talking about Jesus, that Lazarus was sick, he stayed where he was two more days. Jesus was a no-show. Can you imagine? You're hurt. You're in pain. You feel for your brother. You want something to happen good for him. You do everything you're supposed to do. You get in contact with Jesus. And he's a no-show. Man, that brought him on some more pain. Because Sister Michelle, Jesus is a no-show. Now, 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 now. Because I'm at your house, you know. And I want to be for real. You know, if I was God, reread, if I was God, I done blessed me by now. You yeah, half a dozen of y'all caught that. Pull your church face down and ask yourself, if you was God, would you have done blessed you by now? Come on now. Don't look me like a pastor, man. What kind of man of God are you? I'm being just like you are. If you was God, Hello, somebody. Would you uh, would you say, I'd already blessed me with a new car. I'd have me a new house. Somebody said, I'd have me a husband. Somebody else said, I'd have me a new husband. That's crazy. Uh, you would already not bless you. You wouldn't be waiting on him to show up. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor. For real, I've done bless me. Yeah. I mean, I've been coming to church. I'm doing the right thing, Pastor. It's race weekend. I'm here. The jazz has went on in Ohio. Couldn't get no ticket. I'm here. Couldn't stay home and act like I was there. But I came to church. Surely the goodness ought to bless me by now. But yet, you find yourself where Mary and Martha was. He didn't show up yet. See, sometimes the Lord, he don't show as quick as we like for him to. We'd be like, God, how come you ain't showed up now? I done, I done prayed, I done fasted, I done went to church. I done called some prayer wars. I called the prayer line. Man, I talked to the pastor. I mean, I, I ain't read my Bible. Shoot, I dusted it off and found Psalm 23. <laughs> Stop right now. And Jesus, you still ain't showed up. Well, eventually, because Jesus understands, he lets the disciples know this is all about God getting glory. He's operating on a divine schedule. He decides to go and head towards Bethany. When we get to our theme passage there, verse number uh, 21 says to Vanessa, when we get there, the Jesus, uh, Martha says, Lord, to Jesus, if you had been here, Got attitude. My brother wouldn't have died. My brother wouldn't have died. Gee, if you had came when we called you, we I, this wouldn't be going on. She's got some hurt. She got some pain. She remembers she's wounded. She's a hurting woman. My brother's sick and she's hurt. And Jesus, you ain't even showed up. You act like you don't even care. But 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 what we miss out on is verse number twenty-two, the next verse, because she says, "But she got some but faith, sister Silver." She said, "But." Sometimes even when you hurting, even when you in pain, you still got to have a butt faith. But I know God. I know it. you didn't come as quick as I wanted you to. You didn't show up as soon as I need you to show up. But, but is a conjunction in this scenario. Amen. Back in the day, there was a show. Conjunction, junction. I ain't the only one, remember. Amen. See, see, there's a connection between verse 21 and 22. And when you say, but, it's saying, okay, now, the 21st verse is happening, but verse 22 is going to cancel verse 21. And so what, what, what is being said here by Martha is, okay, I understand you didn't show up, but Jesus, I still know the man and whatever you ask God for. And see, sometimes you got to remind yourself that while weeping may endure for a night, but joy is coming. And I'm in some pain. I'm hurting right now. Weeping will endure for a night, but joy is coming in the morning. In this world, you will have trials and tribulation, but be of good cheer. You, you got to hold on to the fact 
that God will show up. Because if the truth be told, somebody can testify up in here. You've been sick, but God heals you. You've been down, but God lifted you up. Yeah, it didn't look good for you, but God made a way out of no way. You didn't know how you were going to make it, but God worked a miracle in your life. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so, and so, so, so Martha has enough faith to push Jesus a little bit further. Yeah, yeah, Jesus said, okay, well, well, well let me go on now. Take me on. But that's the next verse. The Bible said that Jesus said to her and di dialoguing with her, he said, I am. Yeah. The resurrection and the life. He said, I am. Yeah, this I am goes back to Exodus when Moses was said, now who God do I say that I am when I get down here to see Pharaoh? I can't go in my name. He just said, tell him I am that I am. And the reason God, the reason John gives seven I am statements in his gospel concerning Jesus because not one name fits God. See, if you try to define God by one name, y'all will try to confine him to the box of the one name. That's why he's not confined to one. He said, I and he can be whatever, Brother Danny, you need him to be. Can I get a witness in here? Yeah, John, John talked about I, that Jesus said, I am the light of the world. I am the door. I am the good shepherd. I am the true God. I am the way, the truth, and the life. And somebody up in here, you can be a witness and warrior on today. You got a lot of names for God. Because when you was hungry, he was. Y'all better calm down. We can't tear up your house. We in your house. We say, I'm, I'm responsible for end tables, coffee tables. I'm doing my best to stay in this seat because I don't want to mess up nothing. And you try to send me a bill. Can I get a witness in here? But I do get excited because God has been so many things for me. Can I get a witness in here? Didn't have a dime in my pocket. And he's been my provider. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah. I feel something pushing me in here. And so Jesus tell my God, I am the resurrection. Because you need something to, to be raised up. Anybody know that God can raise some stuff up? Yeah, 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 yeah. Do you believe that God can raise some situations up? That's why he said, I am the resurrection. It doesn't matter what your past has been. God is saying, I can be your resurrection. And then he said, do you believe this? He wanted to know, before I go any further, do you believe this? Yeah, yeah, he wanted to know, Martha, can, I can't go no further. I need to know where your faith is. In order to get what God has and experience the miracle he wants to do in your life, for your healing to take place, you've got to believe that he can resurrect. He can bring it back to life. And what, what he does, what he does in the next verse is Vanessa show that to him. I gotta get up out of here. He said, he said to them, where have you laid him? Yeah, 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 yeah. Where have you laid him? I need to ask some sisters in here, where have you laid the brothers at? What box did you put the brothers in? Because we're living in a day and age, I hear this many times, Pastor, all the men are dogs. No, all the men are, are not dogs. Yeah, that's, that's where you lay them at. You lay them in the, in the boat, in the camp that said they're all dogs. No, they're not all dogs. No, all the men are not dogs. There's some men that's got, got a heart after God. Amen. Don't, 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 don't believe that lie that all the men are dogs. Now, I, I can't say that all the men that's been texting you may be dogs. Amen. Uh, all the men, all the men that's been Facebooking you may be dogs. Right? 
All the men that's been trying to get your number could be dog guys. I'm not, I'm not arguing that. I'm arguing that all the men are not dogs. But the thing is, what I'm saying is there are some men that are about the right, trying to do right. I didn't say they were perfect. Amen. But they're not dogs. They're a long way from dogs. Now, sister, you may be experiencing dogs. Can I help you for free? The reason you're experiencing these dogs, you've got to quit serving kittles and bitch. Tell some neighbors, a neighbor, I think he just said something. See, if you keep serving kittles and bitch, kittles and bitch, you're going to attract dogs. So that may be why all you got is some dogs in your life. <laughs> what we must do, what you must do, I gotta change that. Turn to your neighbor and neighbor. What you been serving? part two next week. <laughs> oh my God. Where have you laid? Where have you laid? African American brothers. Specific. Where'd you lay? What, what camp did you put them in? Because if you're not careful, if you lay them in the wrong, all in the wrong box, then you'll get into some stuff yourself that God ain't called you to be in. Because the devil be telling you, well, you know ain't no men out there, so you need to go do A and B and C. And then you'll be outside the will of God because you done laid them all in the wrong box. But what you needed to do is say, I need to bring Jesus to this situation. See, Martha had enough sense. Now, Lord, come and see. I'm going to show you where he's at. I'm going to show you where he's at. Because she's believing that he's the resurrection. I gotta get out of here. I don't have enough fun with that. The Bible says, and then verse 43 there, Sister Vanessa, give them that. I gotta get out of here for real. The Bible said, when Jesus called, he went down to the tomb and he said, Lazarus, come forth. I want you to grab this. He said, Lazarus, come forth. He, now, 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 all of you that are biblical scholars, follow this now. Up until this time in chapter 11, Lazarus, even though we've been talking about him from verse 1 on, they have never referred to him by name. It's not until Jesus says, Lazarus, come forth. Do y'all hear me in here? Say, prior to this, he's the one you love. He's the dead one. He's the one that's stinky. They got all kind of labels for Lazarus. Lazarus don't get up on that because that ain't his name. Did y'all follow that? Did you grab that brand new? Lazarus is going to respond when his name is called. Did y'all catch that? Now, not the other stuff they called him. Not when he's called stinky. Not when he called the dead. Well, not when he's the one Jesus you, you love. No, he doesn't respond to that. See, brothers, we got to know who we are. That you respond to your name. Take a deep breath. I'm going to give you this. I'm going to get out of here. There, there was a man who was down south. He was down in Alabama. He went into this restaurant. He was in a small town, went to this restaurant, and Redneck came into the restaurant. Redneck came into the restaurant, restaurant and said, hey, we don't serve niggas in here. What do you say? The man said, I ain't want no niggas no how. I can't get a hamburger. Those of you who are all real and relevant, remind me to put a warning up next time. <laughs> if you know who you are, you respond to that. You don't respond to stuff 
that you are not. Men, ladies, grab that, get that in your spirit. While you may be hurt, you might be sick, but you gotta understand, I'm gonna respond to who I am. You ain't gonna be calling me this, this, and this and expect me to respond, because that's not who I am. This Lazarus, he, even though he, he, he's, in, he's in heaven now, he, to be absent from the body, to be present with the Lord, he heard Jesus call his name. See, he, he, the only way you can fix the situation we've got going on in our communities and our churches is you've got to push, promote Jesus. You know, there are people that are hurting, there are people that are sick, that are coming. Sin is the cause, but Jesus is the cure. You, you, you have to bring Jesus to that situation that looks like you need a resurrection. And I've got news for you. If you invite Jesus, you've got enough faith to believe because he, he likes to, he wants God to get the glory. So a lot of times he takes it to his dead. It looked like it's over and then he speaks to the situation. That's what he did for Lazarus. Because Lazarus is now dead for four days. Yeah, yeah. When you're dead four days, you're supposed to show up be dead. And Jesus decides, I'm going to show up and call his name. Because when Jesus shows up, he will make a difference. And he showed up and said, Lazarus, come forth. You know what happened? Lazarus got up. Shook off his grave clothes and came walking out because Jesus will make a difference. Y'all still looking at me strange. Let me give it to you this way, and I'm done for real. Well, one of the shows that I often look at on Monday night is on USA. It's entitled WWE. Yeah, World Wrestling Entertainment. Pastor, you would look at that? Yep. Because I got a word for somebody in here. I understand the NWA WWE, that the matches are fixed. Did y'all catch that? That the matches are fixed. That somebody who's over everything decides who will win the match. Did y'all catch that? I said somebody, J Love, that's over everything decides who will win the match. Well, I can't to let somebody know this morning if you stay in the fight but that hurting sister but that sick brother you are going to have the victory because somebody who's over everything has already fixed the fight y'all don't hear me in here see the wrestler he may get thrown over the top rope he Y'all don't hear me in here. He may get a choke slam. Yeah, he may get knocked down. The key for him is to keep on fighting. Did y'all catch that? Because if he keeps on fighting, the victory has already been promised to his situation. I got the bounce today, but somebody need to hear me before you lay somebody at the tomb. Walk away and give up. Get it in your mind, in your spirit. Sister Sean, I'm going to keep fighting because somebody who's bigger than you and me is in charge of everything has already fixed the fight. You need to understand that victory is all ready yours. All you gotta do is make up in your mind. I'm gonna keep on fighting. I'm not just gonna fight on Sunday, but I'll fight on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday and Friday, Saturday too. I might get knocked down, but I'm gonna get back up because I understand that my daddy has already fixed my fight. In here, you believe that your heavenly 
Thank you for listening to Purpose of Life Ministries. We hope you enjoy the message. If you would like a copy of this sermon, call our office at 317-925-0335 or visit our website, www.purposeoflifeministries.com. If you're in the Indianapolis area, we would love for you to visit one of our three services on Sunday at 8 a.m., 10 a.m., or noon. We're located at 3705 Kessler Boulevard, North Drive in Indianapolis. 